Praise God. Who's enjoyed the revival so far? Amen. I appreciate that. Amen. So, we're going to go back to the book of Revelations, chapter 2, and we're going to pick right back up where we left off. Amen. Um. Oh, boy. Let me say something before I start tonight. Amen. Everybody listen up closely. I'm going to be touching on a subject. Amen. You might as well unplug that, Dennis. Amen. Because <laughs> it's off up here. Amen. I don't know what's going on. Praise the Lord. Anyway. I'm going to be touching on a subject that is very, very prominent in today and very, very sensitive, okay? As this, listen to what I'm telling you. Everybody listen to me. I will not have nobody come up to me after this, not one, and say, I know you're talking about so-and-so, or I know that you was talking about me. I'm not going to put up with that stuff, okay? I'm not. Nobody's speaking this because anybody's here. I'm speaking this because this is where we left off, okay? So I don't know your guys' history. I don't want to know your guys' history. Amen? I love all of you. I don't want to. I don't care. But I have to preach what the Bible says. Okay? I can't skip over this to save some people's feelings. Amen? Okay. And I'm just the guy to do it. Amen? So, <laughs> praise the Lord. This is going to get touchy. And as this comes out, it's, it, you might be thinking, man, that's me. Or, man, I know somebody like that. Man, I'm married to that. That's my husband, you know? Amen. Don't get bitter, get better. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I had to give a disclaimer for this one. And unto the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God. Everybody say, Son of God who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like a fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. <clears throat> Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which call it, calleth herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have, uh, have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put on to you none of the burden. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh, there's that word that we keep saying. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Everybody bow your head with me tonight, please. 
Lord, I humble myself before you. I ask you to anoint my lips, anoint my tongue, and anoint this message, God. Let it come out the way that you want it to come out, not the way that I try to preach it. Lord, I ask you to open up the ears of those listening tonight and soften the hardened hearts in the room. Lord, I ask you to bind up any distraction. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask these things. And the church says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight, if you can be. Some people can't be. We continue in our series tonight of the seven churches found in the book of Revelation. Letters that God gave to John to write down. And we know that, as we've covered over the past few days, we know that God said that these letters go to the angels of those churches. Angel meaning messenger to the pastor of those churches. There's seven churches that he talks about, five of which he rebukes, and two he does not. It begins, if you haven't been here, I'm going to give you a recap. It begins with the church in Ephesus, where the Ephesians went. And was anybody here for that? Hey, praise God. <clears throat> he tells them, remember your first love. The church in Ephesus was getting so controlling and so protective over their church that they didn't allow none of the lost to come in anymore. So he said, remember your first love, remember me and the love that I had, have for everybody. And then it goes to the church of Smyrna, the poor church, but the very rich church also. And we heard the other night of a man named Polycarp, Pastor Polycarp who was the pastor of the church of Smyrna. And I told his history and how he willfully was burned alive and eventually stabbed in the heart, laying his life down for the Lord. All of that is historical record. You can type in Polycarp. There's not many people with that name. Amen. And you will find the history and story of him. Magnificent man of God. And we talked about how that's relevant today. All of these churches, we have kept the theme that it's relevant today. Revelation, the book of what was. Come on, have you been listening? Praise God. What was, what is, and what is to come. And we talked about how there's coming a day that we are going to have to act the same way as Smyrna act. We're going to have to be willing to lay our life down for the Lord. And that day is fast approaching. Amen. The word Smyrna I talked about means myrrh. Most people don't know that. Myrrh is an anointing oil that they would use to cover the smell of death. So it was an anointed church that faced death. Amen. And then we went over to Pergamos. And Pergamos, last night, we found, was a church that got a threatening letter it became threatening he rebuked Ephesus told him to repent he told Smyrna good job but then in Pergamos he started off with the threat of judgment instantly he said I cut here comes the one speaking whose tongue is like a double-edged sword instantly he came wielding a weapon and the reason we talked about, the reason he was threatening, threatening them is because they had given into the doctrine of Balaam. And we talked about Balaam and what that doctrine is. That doctrine is trying to outsmart God. Professing the things of God, doing the things of God, but then secretly trying to get financial gain or trying to do sin. Amen. And God was very upset with that. And we, we closed last night with a, a happy medium. There is a happy medium. So you can't do like Ephesus and get so controlling and so protective that nobody's allowed to come in. <clears throat> but you can't be like Pergamos and allow people to come in and lift their hands up and do all that and then go out here and fornicate. And that's what he was saying. And then we go tonight to a church called Thyatira. 
In this church, not only allowed sin in it, but gloried in sin. So you're noticing a trend. Like with Pergamus, sin came in. They still tried to hide it, but it was there. It was done in secret. And what that does is opens up a door to where it's no longer a secret. And that's what happened in Thyatira. They openly was in sin. They would justify their sin. <clears throat> I want to give you a quick history. Thyatira, the city, was founded by Alexander the Great, uh, the military man. He founded it, amen. And it was very big in pagan worship. You're going to hear that through all these churches. That was the area that they was in. It was notable for its worship of pagan gods, such as Apollo, which was the sun god. <clears throat> It was located in a spot that was very important for trade and commerce. So it was in a good spot, a lot of people coming through. And as God wrote this letter out, he starts off again in a threatening manner. You're about to witness a very upset God. A very mad God. People talk about God as being the God of love, and I preach it as much as I can. He absolutely is a God of love and mercy and grace. But I would be a heretic if I denied that He is also a very just and wrathful God. There are things that God hates. Absolutely hates them. There are things that God will not tolerate. Amen. And this church was doing those things. Right off the bat, he says, These things saith the Son of God. In the beginning, he called himself the Son of Man. In Revelations 1, he called himself the Son of Man. But listen here, he said, the Son of God. A direct punch to the mouth of all the people that are worshiping pagan gods. He said, I'm the Son of God. I'm the one speaking. The one God. Notice that big G there? I'm the son of the big G. Amen? Not your little G. So he's coming in hot. Amen? He's coming in establishing his authority already. This is who I am speaking. And he says, These things saith the Son of God, whose eyes are like unto a flame of fire. In other words, I can look at you and burn you. I can look at you and purify you. I can do whatever I want to do. <clears throat> if we ever got a letter like this, we better listen up. Amen. It scares me in the church of today how just relaxed we are with such a big God that we have here. It's very scary, the games that, that I see Christians willing to play. Boundaries that they're willing to cross. I mean, even this, what we consider a small thing is not a small thing to God. But we're so comfortable in sin, just like Thyatira, that we consider gossip a small thing. Well, they're just talking bad about somebody. But God doesn't see it as a small thing. Not at all. We act like it's no big deal. He's not happy with it. You better be careful how you talk about men and women of God. Amen. Amen. You better be very careful. You better watch how you talk about pastors and preachers. I ain't saying that because I am one. A lot of you, the issues that are going on in your life, you spoke on yourself Amen. by talking bad about a man of God or a woman of God. You brought that fire on yourself. You started talking about one of God's chosen and made him look at you with those flaming eyes. And now you're melting from the heat. Hey Amen. He tells them, he says, the ones with the eyes like flame 
of fire. Now, there's other theologians that'll say this means something different. I'm just going to preach what God's put on me. Amen. If you don't like it, go listen to one of them. He says, and his feet are like fine brass to me. Now, there's, that's a reference all through the Bible. But to me, I believe that's where he walked through hell. Amen. Amen. And it couldn't burn him. Amen. Amen. He's been tried in the fire. Remember, after he was crucified, he went to hell and took the keys. Amen. And I believe his feet are like fine brass because of that. He said, I know thy works and charity. Check this out. So he knows their love. That's what that means. Charity means love in action. So I know your works and your love in action. So now we have a church that's doing what it's supposed to be doing. If you go to a church that doesn't operate in love and has no works behind it, you ain't in a church. Amen. You're in a social gathering place. You're not in a church. You might as well be in a bar. Amen. <coughs> At least then you can see the guy trying to steal your money. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost on me. He said, I, I know your service and your faith. So they're checking off the list of good things. And that's what terrifies me as I go through these letters. These churches are not, you just walk in and can tell it's bad. You can't tell. They're checking off all the list of things that they're supposed to be doing. And that terrifies me, Pastor James, because we could end up doing that. Just checking it off the list. Okay, I'm doing this because I'm required to. I'm doing this because I'm required to. Lose the love and the reason that we're doing all that. Lose all that and not even realize it. Watch this. I know your service, serving him in your faith, and your patience. And how, look, and the last to be more than the first. So this is a growing church. It's not a small church. It's now the last, the latter is bigger than when it started. I'm telling you, it don't matter how many people's in your pew. It really don't. Preachers get so caught up on filling the pews. And listen, I'm blessed that all of you guys are here. It's, it is beautiful to look out and see all of you guys. It's just amazing what God's done. But it ain't about that. There can be a thousand more people in here, but if all thousand of them are headed to hell, it doesn't make no difference. Amen. So it, it doesn't matter if the church grows. If there's sin in it, it don't matter. And that's the problem we got today. Out of all the letters that I've read, I hate to say this, but I got to. God's put it on me. After all, out of all the letters that I've read and studied, and believe me, I put everything I've got into this to bring you an edifying word. But out of all of them, we are in the church of Thyatira today. Most of the churches I go to, this is what I see. Not all of them, but most of them. You can walk into churches and literally see homosexuals leading worship. There is no problem with a homosexual being in the church. Absolutely none. It's better for him to be in here than out there. He's just struggling with something. But when you put him in a position, knowing that he's living in sin... That's dangerous game. Amen. Amen. I love that the Rock Church, the church that we merged with, I love that they do have qualifications in order to stand here. People say, that's legalistic. God calls me, blah, blah. Well, listen, all they're wanting to do is make sure that you, that you are living the same way behind the pulpit, behind closed doors. And I'm all for that because my wife and child sit in here. I don't want some guy up here preaching and having authority and trying to teach me than going out here and fornicating and doing these things that he's not supposed to do. He brings in spirits in and unleashes them on me and my family. Amen. It doesn't matter how big the church is. When we look around today and you see these big mega churches and I'm not bashing them. That's beautiful. But when you listen to the motivational speeches, and that's what they are, they're not sermons. 
I operate in sermons every day of my life. This is what God's called me to do. I don't do anything else. Amen. This is all I do. I know when I'm hearing God speak. He said, my sheep will hear my voice and they will know me. I know when I listen to these big time preachers, I'm not hearing my father come out of their mouth. I'm hearing their writing team. <laughs> How do I know that? Because I'm not hearing anything about sin and where sin will take you. All I'm hearing is how everything's okay. It's all okay. Whatever you're doing's okay. Now you can't get so you can't get so much order that people feel uncomfortable coming in. You have to be welcoming. But it doesn't have to be so black and white. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You don't have to be so legalistic that if they don't look like you, talk like you, sound like you, they're not allowed in. You don't have to be that way. But you also, in return, don't have to flip over and say, everybody's welcome to do whatever they want as long as they're in here. There is a happy medium. Hey Amen. I got six people that like that. Hey Amen. Y'all think whatever. I'm preaching good right now. Amen. There is a happy medium. Listen, you have to have the men of God that make a stand when a stand needs to be made. Amen. What good am I if I don't do that? But what? Listen, I'm no good if I do it out of no love. I have to have love when I make that stand. If I get up here to re and rebuke just to rebuke, I'm a tyrant. I'm not a preacher. Amen. I'm just a rude guy. And I've met plenty of them Amen. that were just rude guys. I met this one preacher every time I seen him, he said, I'm about to go in there and, well, he, my God, do you ever get a loving message? Well, we got some things we got to correct. That ain't your job. That's the Holy Ghost job. That's the problem with not just the preachers, but the Christians also. We're trying to correct everybody else. See, he said, we have to overcome. We have to overcome what? All the things that he's saying we have to overcome involve us. We have to overcome ourselves. Fix yourself. Amen. Amen. I had a guy tell me one time, my job is to perfect the saints. I must be standing in front of the Holy Spirit. Your job, he said, he gives us some offices and some positions for the perfecting of the saints. See, when I step into that office, amen, that God puts me in, when I'm in the office of a pastor and people lie to me and abuse me and steal off me, I get perfected when I'm able to forgive them and move on. Not me trying to fix them, but that office is what's perfecting me, a saint. Amen. Praise God, I'm glad you're with me because I'm, I'm going to work my way down now. Had to get you on my side for a moment. And here he comes and he says, Now I have something, a few things, James, against thee. And I've told you many times, and I'm probably going to say it every night and the, uh, from now on throughout the revival, there's been many men that stand in front of me and you. I'm sure you guys have went through this. And they look you in your face and they say, I've got a problem with you, buddy. Anybody ever been there? Yes. Amen. That's right. That's the kind of church I want to belong to, one that makes people mad. Amen. I've had a lot of people stand in front of me and say, I've got a problem with you, and I don't feel anything. I don't care. Anybody ever been there? Yes. Amen. Amen. I think whatever. You're having a problem all by yourself. Amen. Not feel no fear, not feel no anger, not feel anything. Just, Lord. But if Jesus Christ is standing in front of me, and he says, I've got a few things against you. I've got a problem with you. Oh, I'm going to listen. Amen. Amen. There ain't no tough guy there, amen. I'm gonna, I'm sorry, amen. And that's what he says. He says, now I got a few things against thee. 
Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Amen. Now, let me say something here. I prayed very hard about this message. Listen to me. Raise your hand if you ever heard the word Jezebel. Right. Raise your hand if you ever met a woman that was actually named Jezebel. Amen. Okay, listen. I prayed very hard. I said, Lord, how do you want me to take this? Because I come from Pentecostal. That's where I come from. Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. We're multi-denominational. Okay? Beautiful. Mm, but I come from Pentecostal so I can say a couple things. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Just a little. All right. I had this white guy one time. He said, uh, he said something to this black guy. And he said, but ain't that true? That's what black people do. And the black guy looked at him and said, eh, no, I can say that, but you can't. <laughs> and he said, that's racist. He said that to the black guy. He said, that's racist. And I was sitting there and I thought, that ain't racist. That's good wisdom. Amen. <laughs> it just, it sounds better when he says it, not you. Okay. Now, since I am Pentecostal, okay, uh, Amen. A oneness Pentecostal at that. Now check this out. Check this out. Bishop Derek Harrison, you guys met him. He's the Indiana State Bishop over the Rock Church. 100% Trinitarian or whatever. He brought his people in. They were Trinitarians and sat through a oneness message. Amen. And glorifying God. We can all get along. Amen. Amen. But for the Pentecostals, oh, Bishop Shane has somewhat against thee. Amen. Because... I heard more about Jezebel than I did Jesus for a long time. Amen. And that's exactly what we're going to learn that Jezebel wants. She wants to be the center of attention. Amen. Wants to be the topic of the conversation all the time. And we're going to get into that. And I've seen some sermons, Brother Nathan. Amen. And I've watched some sermons that had... A hundred things to spot Jezebel. Ten thousand ways to spot Jezebel. A thousand traits of Jezebel. And all these things had me looking for Jezebel under every rock. Amen. Scared me to death. Every woman I met. I'd meet a woman at the gas station. She'd say, hi, how are you? And I'd think, Jezebel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And that's what that stuff does. People take that deliverance and that possession stuff, especially Pentecostals. We take it a little too far sometimes. Jesus said, don't glory in the fact that they're subject to you. In other words, don't give them no attention. Just move on. Amen. Amen. Cast them out and move on. Amen. Now, he's not talking about Jezebel here, the actual woman. The actual woman is found in 1 Kings. And I asked God, I said, God, how do you want me to bring this out? He said, I do, this is what the Lord told me. He said, I do want you to, because I had a two-day sermon planned. A two-day sermon. That was the Pentecostal coming out in me. I was like, there's so much I could go over. He said, yeah, and then the whole revival, the whole revival is about Jezebel then. Amen. So he said, I just want you to take, explain the history of who she is. That way they understand why I said this. And then I want you to get right back to the church. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try. Amen. If not, blame the Pentecostals. Amen. It says he has something against them because they suffer them, uh, they suffer themselves to the woman Jezebel, which call it her, calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, for me, I have expressed up here before, I have many of friends that are women that are preachers, amen, and that will testify and all that. But I personally, you can disagree with this if you want, that's okay. 
I personally do not believe in female pastors, which is different than a preacher. Okay? And I think that that's one of the first mistakes that they made. They got a woman pastoring this church. I and mean, not just any woman, a woman that God compares to the woman called Jezebel. Now, who is she? You can find her in 1 Kings. And I'm going to take you over there real quick. Amen. In 1 Kings, Jezebel marries a man named Ahab. Everybody say Ahab. Amen. You don't have to say amen unless you want to. Amen. She marries Ahab. Ahab is a king. So she becomes a queen. Amen. And she is a very, very malicious queen. Not just malicious queen. She is an evil person. And the name Jezebel today actually kind of personifies evil. Amen. If you hear Jezebel, that's what you think. You think evil. There's so many stories I could go into. Amen. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to tell you my knowledge of what I've picked up through reading 1 Kings, okay? and second kings and all that i want to give you my knowledge on some of the traits and things that i've seen that jezebel had there's so many stories in there there's one where she she kills a guy for her husband to get his vineyard i mean there's ones where she's got uh, elijah on the run and he hides in a cat there's so many stories in there but one of the same theme that it has throughout it is that jezebel wants control she wants control and she wants power the woman Spoken of in Kings. She wants control and she wants power. And listen, she's willing to do anything at all. Anything. There's nothing off limits to get control and power. Anything. No matter how evil it is, she has no morals. She has no standards. She has no principles. She has no feelings. She has no regret. She has no conscience. She was willing to do anything at all to get power and control. And what she really wanted, I see y'all looking at each other like it sounds like my ex-wife. Listen, what <laughs> it might have been you, so don't be. Hey Amen. Look. Nothing was what she really wanted was to have them worship the God of Baal. She wanted the Israelites and the Hebrews to worship the God of Baal. That's what she wanted. She wanted to make them bow their knee to another God other than God. Because that's the ultimate power. Listen, that was the ultimate power. They're chosen by God. They love God. I'm going to make them serve another one. They're chosen by God. They love God. Amen. They're chosen by God. They love church. Amen. Praise God. I'm just telling you. This spirit's still alive. My wife loves church, but I ain't going, and I'm going to give her a hard time about going. Jezebel, doesn't matter that you're a man. Amen. Praise God. Husband loves church, but you're going to yell at him, start a fight, get jealous every time he goes. Well, I bet you're looking at the other women. I bet you're doing You only go there because so-and-so's there. Listen, Jezebel. Amen. The Spirit trying to stop them from worshiping God. This Spirit doesn't know a gender. It's a Spirit. A Spirit is a person without a body. It's looking for a body to go into. It doesn't matter what sex the body is. If you open the door and allow it to come in, it's going to come in. Amen. And it may have on some of you. I don't know. But listen, it wants power, it wants control, and it wants to stop you from worshiping God. That's what it wants. It wants to stop anything God-like. And it uses a couple tactics. That's what I'm going to talk about. We call it traits, whatever, characteristics. But it uses a couple tactics. The spirit. We use a cut. The spirit of Jezebel. We use a couple tactics to get what it wants. Are you ready for this? 
One that I've noticed through reading was manipulation. And I wrote a couple notes here that I want to read to you. It says, manipulation, both spiritual and personal, is a hallmark sign of a Jezebel spirit. It exemplifies control-driven uh, behavior aimed at subverting and dominating others. Now, let me tell you guys something. Being a Christian is not about dominating somebody else. Nowhere in there does it say that we are better, over top of, have rule of. It does not say that over another person. It says the exact opposite. It says to serve them. Matter of fact, he said those that are last will be first. Amen? So anytime you have somebody trying to dominate or control, you already are in counter with that spirit. You're already encountering it. It's there. The spirit of Jezebel is there. Amen. And it'll use manipulation to do that. Tricking you. Guilt tripping you. What do you guys call it nowadays? Gaslighting? I had to Google that. I didn't know what it, I didn't know what it meant. Some of you looking at me like you don't know what it means either. Let me tell you. It's a manipul it's a guilt trip. I do something wrong and then I blame you for it. Right? Gaslighting somebody. Hey man. It happens all the time. Anytime you deal with that, and maybe you're doing that, I don't know. If you are doing that, I'm just trying to shine a light that it might not be you. It might be a spirit guiding you. Amen. <laughs> so it will manipulate. Anytime you see manipulation, you're dealing with a Jezebel spirit. Deception is another hallmark trait. Now, deception's not just a lie. It is. But a lie to me is a little different. Deception is definitely a lie. It's a falsehood. But it's done through a strategic measure. You following me? I've, I've seen people lie just off the top of their head. Right? Right? Just boom. I could go into a story about that, but I'm not going to. Amen. But deception seems premeditated, seems thought out, seems planned. And I've been deceived. I've had somebody who presented themselves to me one way that they was not. And I believed that they was this person that they presented themselves to be. And when somebody else told me they wasn't, I believed the deception so much that I got mad at the person that talked bad about them. That's how I looked at it. They talked bad about them. And they sat there grinning the whole time because they're deceptive. Amen. They liked it. They knew they got one over on me. And that's Jezebel. Coming to disrupt, coming to cause discord, coming to separate and divide. See, if we're all mad at each other and fighting with each other, we're not paying attention to what we're supposed to be paying attention to, which is God. We have now made idols out of the situation because the situation's all we're talking about, all we're serving is that situation. Amen. Amen. And that's what she comes to do. Another thing, listen to this, ladies. Women. Where's all the women? I can't see you guys. Hey, man, this light's bright. <clears throat> Isolation is another sign of a Jezebel spirit. Amen. We know that because of Elijah. When he was dealing with a Jezebel, he felt like he had to go into a cave all by himself. The way that the women will see that today is when the man doesn't let you talk to your family, doesn't let you go outside, can't go into a gas station without him, can't do this without him. He's checking your phone all the time. He's Listen, he's isolating you, cutting off all your friends, cutting off all your family. 
And he's isolating you to get control over you because he's an insecure little boy. But the reason he's an insecure little boy is because he's got a spirit on him that is driving him to do that. That's good preaching. Anywhere you see isolation, you're going to be dealing with Jezebel. Amen. Rebellion is another one. <clears throat> anytime there was somebody that acted in authority, an example, Elijah again, anytime there was somebody that acted in authority, Jezebel wanted to kill them. She specifically wanted to kill the man of God. She hated, and I'm talking about the one in Kings, she hated the man of God. Anybody in a, a position of authority, spiritual authority. In this case, it was the prophet, right? So she hated him. Wanted him dead. Wanted all the prophets dead. So she was trying to cause rebellion against him. Again, I'm telling you, be careful who you're listening to when they're bad-mouthing the preachers. Be careful. That person might not even realize it, but Jezebel is speaking through them. Amen. Trying to cause a rebellion. Bible says to honor the ones that watch for your soul. Amen. Now, I'm not saying a preacher or pastor has got a free ride to do whatever. <laughs> but listen, you got to question the intent of somebody when they pull you off wanting to badmouth specifically the man of God or woman of God. What's the purpose in this? Rebellion. Arrogance. And this is where seduction comes in. A Jezebel spirit is known for being seductive. This is why women are always blamed for being Jezebels, but men can do this too. Amen. You know, I always find it funny that we laugh at men when they're arrogant, but we call women sluts when they're arrogant. Amen, it's true. I, some of you guys walk so puffed up, I can't even hardly look at you. I mean, just swag. That's not good. Bible says to be humble and be meek, not boastful and the hottest thing to ever hit the streets. But see, we, we're laughing at that when a man does it, right? It's, it's funny, ha, 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 ha. But let a woman walk by like this, and you guys are going, look at that whore. Well, there's no difference. They're both wrong. <laughs> hey, man, you're, you're both wrong because you're both trying to do the same thing, which is distract people, make them stumble. Throwing a stumbling block out. Hey, man. So anywhere you see seduction... I'd stop with the with the with the gym pictures, guys. When you're at the gym with your shirt off, taking pictures, putting them on Facebook, what is the point of that? Nobody wants to see that little pigeon chest. Hey, man! I seen one a guy posted. He said above it, it said, "Look at my six pack, dude. You're 110 pounds. That's not hard to do." Hey, man! When you're that skinny. Seduction is a clear sign of a Jezebel. Now let me switch over to the ladies. If God wanted your lips that big, he would have made them that big. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah. What's it called? <laughs> duck lips. The duck face. I mean, come on. Y'all been in trouble since I got a Facebook page back. <laughs> Amen. I can't believe you guys added me as a friend. I'm just, some of you didn't. They was like, nope. But... <laughs> I've been going through there. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Know what I'm preaching about. But what's the point in doing that unless you're trying to be seductive? Any Listen, anywhere you do that, you say, well, I just did that because I've seen other people do it. Terrible idea. Amen. Because they might have done it because the spirit of Jezebel caused them to do it, and now you're doing it, opening the door for her to come in on you. Amen. And ultimately, division and destruction. That's what she wants. She wants to divide and destroy. And as we learned with the church in Pergamos, Balaam said, told Balak, I don't have to. Listen to this. Balaam told Balak, I don't have to curse them. God won't let me, but guess what? I can make them curse themselves. And Balak said, how are you going to do that? He said, put prostitutes in front of them and they'll fornicate. Entice them with sex and they will fall. That's what he said. And that's what Balak done. And 24,000 of them got killed because of it. So let's go to the area again that no preacher wants to go to. And that is the area of sex and sexual immorality. I want to touch again on what God said. He compares himself as a husband and compares the church as a bride and tells us that him and us, the bride, are in a covenant together and he compares it to marriage. And he says that this marriage that he has with us, the bride, that he was willing to die, be tortured, lied on, gossip, smacked in the face, all that stuff for his bride. And then he came here and he did exactly what he said. He showed us that that's what he's willing to do for me and you. Amen. Now listen, he tells us, that's wonderful, but listen, he tells us, he says, now I am calling you to set yourself apart from the heathen way. Set yourself apart and do as I've done. You know what that means? That means you're a one-woman man. Amen. They're not cars that you get a test drive. Amen. And you're a one-man woman. Amen. Oh, hold on, ladies. That don't mean that when he gets on your nerves or, or he gets fat, that happens. Amen. I always found it cruel that the wife makes the man fat and then leaves him because he's fat. Well, you did it! Amen! You wasn't buying me weights, you was buying me biscuits and gravy! What'd you think would happen? <laughs> but look, just because he gets on your nerves, just because he doesn't look like he did when you guys met, just because of this, just because of that, doesn't mean you can say, well, I got a backup plan and call so-and-so down the road. You cannot do that. That's what heathens do. Not men and women of God. Amen? <laughs> and Balaam told Balak, if you put women and prostitutes in front of them, they will fall, and then they will worship other gods. In other words, they will, listen closely, they will worship whatever god that woman's worshiping because they do not have control of their flesh. Their flesh is not subject to them. They are subject to their flesh. In other words, they serve their flesh. So if them women look good enough, y'all better hear me, man. If they look good enough, the Israelites, you and me, will do whatever they say just to sleep with them. Amen. Amen. And he tried it, and that's what happened. And now we go back to Jezebel, whose husband was Ahab. Everybody say Ahab. Ahab. Ahab was her husband. He was put in the position of authority, the head of his household. 
He had plenty of opportunities and plenty of chances to say, that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. That's not how this works. But instead, he said, yes, baby, and let her do whatever she wanted to do. In other words, he went against the foundation of God in marriage by letting his wife lead. I knew this would be unpopular. <laughs> but it's the truth. Hey, man of God, we wasn't made to serve women. Hey, man. We wasn't made to dominate them and control them either. Amen. We was made to love them and be willing to die for them and be tortured for them. Just like Christ did the church. See, that part don't go away. A lot of you guys puff up and say, yeah, I'm the man of the house. Yeah. Let's see about that. I'm the man. I don't serve women. Let one of them text you. Let's see what happens. Let one of them duck lips on Facebook send you a message. Amen. Let one of them come floating by telling you, I need this amount of money and I need this and I need this. I've seen you do it. Take it, take it, honey, take it, honey. At the very thought of sleeping with she don't even have to sleep with you. Just the thought of it. Your flesh is not out of control. Come on. Come on. Amen. I've had in the sober living ministry, whenever I was involved in it daily, I had five different men come in to pay the same woman's rent one time. All five of them loved her and was going to die for her and fix it to marry her. That's a true story, ain't it? And she just, she wasn't sleeping with none of them. Didn't have to. She just had to make them think. You say, well, my flesh is under control. But some of you would walk across a thousand miles of broken glass just to look at them naked. They don't even have to sleep with you. Your flesh is not under control. I was so, I was so heartbroken last night when we talked about fornication and sex. I said, you can be delivered from this. This door can be shut in your heart. It absolutely can. God shut those doors in my heart. I used to struggle just like anybody. So don't tell me he can't. I know he can't. I said, your deliverance is up here. Come in agreement with love. That's what I said. And what I, I believe I explained it just perfectly fine because this side was full. I said, I'm not going to judge you. Bible tells me to lay hands on you. I've been right where you're at. You struggling with pornography? You don't think I ever watched it? I'm getting way too real for them all of a sudden. We might as well just go down here to the Church of Christ and just call it quits. Amen. You don't think that I, I've ever lusted? I was a heathen just like you. There's no difference in me and you. The only difference is God touched me. Amen. And He touched me in love, not in judgment. He touched me in mercy and in love. He forgave me. And I told him last night, I said, you can be forgiven and he'll shut them doors. Get on the altar. You have to be in agreement. By stepping to the front, you're in agreement. This side got full. Not one man got on that altar. Not one. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. I looked to the left and it was all women. I said, all the men just got it figured out. None of y'all struggle. Huh. Wow. Call National Geographic because something's not normal here, James. And then, and then I see something. I see something that just, I watch you guys just start walking out. There they went. Do, do. One of them had the nerve. Good preaching. A 
I thought, let me catch him talking to a woman. Let me. Amen. But look, I look over this way, and there's my brother Jersey on the altar. I said, my God, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Here he is on the altar. What for? Who knows? Don't be looking at Jersey going, what a sexual deviant. Amen. He gets, on, he gets on the altar for whatever reason. He jumps up. He tells me, I got to tell you something. I said, what? Now, when Jacob Miller come into the sober living a long time ago, when he first come in, he couldn't stand all the stuff about the Holy Ghost and all that stuff and where he come from another place. They talk in tongues. And he, hey, yo, God don't move like that. He was, he was raised Catholic. He was raised Catholic. He jumps up last night. He says, I felt fire in my hands. I felt fire in my hands. He said, my hands got so hot, it was like they's on fire. My whole body, he took me outside. He said, my whole body started tingling. He said, it's tingling right now. He told me just a little bit ago before I come in here, he said, it tingled all the way home. It tingled all night long. Amen. He got the Holy Ghost. And then I watch his brother Adam comes up. Amen. And some of y'all didn't get to see this because you done took off. It got way too real for you. Not the preacher talking about sex. I got to go. Amen. Brother Adam come up. Amen. Was there, Who's in here for that? Anybody feel that go on? We commanded that devil to leave. That thing tucked its tail and took off. Amen. I watched Brother Adam back there shortly after. You could tell something's different. He got his arm up worshiping the Lord. Amen. He's no longer a question mark. Amen. He's now an explanation point. Amen. Hey, guess what? That was there for all of you. That was there for every one of you. But only them two partaked. Amen. Don't tell me, brother, I'm struggling with it. No, you're not. You're keeping it. Because I know what God said. He said it'll go. You tell it to go in my name, it'll go. And it will. You come to the wrong one, tell me any different. Amen. You tell it to go in the name of Jesus, it's got to go unless you're holding on to it. See, you can't evict something that has a right to be there. You acting like, well, well, these evil spirits are squatting in my house. They're squatting in my temple. No, a squatter is not allowed to be there. You've done rented the house out to them. Amen. And you're paying them for it. Amen. You're paying them to live inside you. Every time you open up your phone and go to Pornhub, you're paying them. Every time you look at her, she walks by, you're paying them. Amen. See, it bothered me, Justin. Can I preach for a moment? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all going to wheel me out of here tonight. I'm a little drunk. Amen. See, it bothered me last night because, hey, I know that there's sin. Amen. How can there not be? We, we haven't made it yet. We're all sinning in some way or another. So when I seen them just, oh, good preaching, brother. See you later. Something's off, man. It got me wondering, maybe they're not trying to hide it. Maybe they're just comfortable in it. Maybe, maybe you've been faking this thing for so long that now you don't even feel bad for sinning. See, your heart's getting calloused. The Holy Ghost pricking you, saying, hey, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. you got to do better. And you've ignored him so long that now your heart's calloused. Amen. So I started getting worried for your soul. That's what was happening in Thyatira. Listen to me. That's the exact thing that was happening. Now I promise you, you can go out here and there's churches right down the road that you can go into and they'll tell you you're perfectly fine doing what you're doing. And that'll make you feel good and you can sit in there and give them your money and they'll tell you you're going to heaven, but you ain't going to make it. 
and neither are they. Amen. They got Jezebel up there preaching. And she telling them all, it feels good, do it. There's no consequences for your action. There's no repercussion for your sin. God understands. Hey, I cannot be in a church where Jezebel's behind the pulpit. Amen. Amen. And I won't be one. Amen. I have to tell you because I am so concerned for you. I'm on the rooftop shouting it. I said, well, they won't listen to me. Let me just read the letter. God said, and I've given her space to turn away of her fornication. He's given you the room to turn away from it. But you did not. But she did not. He says, she repented not. My Lord, how many times has that altar been open? How many times has He pricked your heart and given you room? He's given you space. Turn away. Repent. Turn away from it. Stop it. How many times has He done that with whatever you're going through? Fornication, lust, whatever. It is. How many times has He done that and you repented not? Oh, he said, behold, I'm going to cast her into a bed. Huh. I'm going to cast her into a bed. You want to be in a bed, you whore? I'll throw you in one then. That's what he's saying. Not just the women. I'm talking to the men. You want to be on your back so bad? God said, I'll put you on it. But it won't be no instant gratification or some kind of sexual pleasure. He said, I'll put her on that bed and all them that commit adultery with her and I'm going to give them great tribulation. His words, not my words now. I've not told you if I wrote this Bible, there'd be like two pages in it, okay? I wouldn't put none of this in there. I didn't write it. I just got to live by it. Amen. Amen. You want to lay in a bed, I'll put you in one, and I'll cause great tribulation. Listen, but we, he's merciful, except, there's an exception, except they repent. There it is again. Turn away from it. Another chance when we don't deserve it. That's the God I'm serving. That's the God I'm talking about. Hallelujah. I give you another chance when you don't deserve it. He says, and I will kill her children with death. What a weird... I will kill them with death. <laughs> you don't even have to use something. You'll just be dead. I'll, I'll kill you with death. Not I'll kill you with a gun. I'll kill them with a... No, I'll just kill them with death. They're children. What does that mean? Anybody listening? Anybody, not the actual children, anybody listening, anybody following her. Amen. And all the churches shall know that I am he. I am he which searches the reins and the hearts. I will give unto you every one. I'll give unto every one of you according to your works. I'll give you, I'll treat you the way you're acting. You acting like a heathen, I'm going to treat you like a heathen. Uh, he says, but unto, unto you, 
Amen. I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have, I'm trying to close, I promise, as many has uh, not done these things and went to the depths of Satan, he'll, he'll show mercy on them. Amen. And that's what he, that's what Jezebel will do. She'll take you so deep that you don't want to go. So look in Pergamus, they was, they were sitting at the seat of Satan, right? With, with Jezebel, she took them even further. So they're at Satan's seat. They're where sin is, but, but they're, they're hiding it. They're ashamed of it. They're still doing God's work. They're just, you know, trying to do this in darkness. But over here, she took them so far. And that's what sin does. It takes you way farther than you want to go. You can't dabble in it. You can't play with it. You're going to lose. You're going to discover the depths of Satan. I went pretty deep with Satan. I didn't even scratch the surface of what he was able to do to me when I allowed it. But I went deep enough to know that I'm fighting a losing battle. Amen. I went deep enough to know that when God hit me that night that, hey, that's who I want. Amen. I went deep and I was so ashamed of myself, Brother Rodney. Amen. Hey, I know I'm preaching long. You don't like to get up and leave. I don't care. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's Saturday night. Where else would you rather be? Amen. Listen, I, I, my Lord, I was so ashamed of myself. I'd look in that mirror, all 120 pounds, and touch, just ashamed of myself and the things that I was doing. Satan was taking me so far. I was following that doctrine of Jezebel. If it feels good, do it. And I was reaping what I sowed, and that's what he's telling Thyatira, you're going to reap what you sow. Oh my. Listen, this is my favorite part coming up. And he that overcometh, verse 26, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him... Well, I give him power over the nations. Everybody say, overcometh. What are they overcoming? Overcoming themselves. It's their flesh that allowed Jezebel up there. It's their flesh that bowed their knee to it. He tells them you have to overcome yourself. Jezebel's going to be Jezebel. Who cares? Let the heathen be the heathen. But you are called to be a child of God. In order to do that, there's some flesh that you have to overcome. Stand to your feet. My, my, my. Well, I didn't like that. I don't care. I loved every second of it. Amen. Praise God. Hey, buddy. Hey, I needed that too. Amen. Don't think I'm up here preaching on you. I'm preaching to me. Yeah, he shut the doors of lust and all that, but I still got some problems going on. Amen. I still got some flesh. I ain't perfect yet. You know when you'll see me perfect? When I'm laying in that box and God's calling me home. Don't you cry over my body and say he made it. That old dog, he finally made it. Amen. <laughs> Y'all started clapping. like. <laughs> James said, I can't wait. Amen. <laughs> Some of you be like, thank God he's gone. Amen. That's all right. I can't wait to go myself. Amen. I don't want to go like I am, though. I've got to lay some things down still. Dennis Bush still got some things to lay down. He's 110. Amen. Amen. 109. I'm sorry. Amen. I don't want to make you older than you are. Amen. 109. But, <laughs> but if you ask him, 
You ask Dennis, you ever have a conversation with him? If you haven't, you should. He'll say, he sit there and tell you, I still got some problems in me. Amen. That old stinking me, that's what he'll say. Amen, I still did this, I still did that. Praise God. Close your eyes tonight. He said he's going to give us another chance to repent. Thank God for the other chance. Lord knows we need it sometimes. This might be your other chance. Hey, listen, it might be your final chance. God's not required to keep on with you. He's the potter, you're the clay. You're not blessing, you're not a blessing to him, amen. People act like they're doing God a favor. God do whatever God wants to do. He don't need you to do it. He's doing us a favor by being so merciful. By giving you another breath in your lungs to profess his name and to profess your sin and get rid of it. He's doing you a favor tonight, amen. Every one of us should be in hell right now. Every one of us, except for all you perfect people. Amen. But well, we serve a God that's good. Amen. Amen. If you don't know him tonight, I want to tell you his name. His name is Jesus Christ. Came here 2,000 years ago and died for your sins so that you can call on his name. The Bible says one cannot be saved unless the Spirit draws, and I believe he's drawing somebody tonight. Don't come up to me saying, save me, preacher. I can't save you, man. I'll just push you, push you right on that altar. Tell him. Amen. Amen. Tell him. Cry out to him. Now, some of you last night should have came, and you know you should have came, and you didn't. Some of you sat right there and knew that word was for you, and you didn't. The women did, but then men didn't. And that's a pride issue. Tonight's the night that the pride goes away. Amen. Tonight's the night you get that second chance for a second and third time. Amen. Tonight's the night we repent and overcome. Tonight's the night God will show you how good He really is. He loves you. So do I. I encourage any of you, if you feel like God wants you on this altar, come tonight. You guys have what God put on my heart. I thank you for putting up with me.